Hey guys, Aaron Cybertron Zhang here, and today we are re-exploring a core that was very, very popular back in Series 8, and that's Mimikyu plus Calyrex Ice Rider. Calyrex Ice Rider is a pretty interesting restricted Pokemon. It felt like it was a little bit stronger in Series 8, Dynamax just turned it into an absolute monster, but one of the interesting things about Calyrex, both Ice Rider and Shadow Rider, is that, you know, obviously its strongest attack is a spread type attack. So even in Series 8, for example, when you would Dynamax the Calyrexes, then they would no longer be able to use their signature attacks, and they'd only have to hit one Pokemon at a time. So Weakness Policy has kind of fallen off in VGC Series 10, obviously because it's typically a really good item specifically on Dynamax Pokemon, but Calyrex Ice Rider continues to be one of the best Weakness Policy users, even in a non-Dynamax format. So, you know, the idea often is to just self-Shadow Sneak, activate that Weakness Policy on Calyrex, and then just sweep with Glacial Lance, ideally. However, Calyrex Ice Rider is also really bulky, and when you factor in that the Incineroar here has Intimidate as well, it's really difficult to KO, and so very frequently, actually, your opponents will probably just activate the Weakness Policy for you because it's pretty difficult to handle Calyrex easily unless you're using super effective attacks, but most super effective attacks actually don't one-shot it either. So, uh, Mimikyu and Calyrex, you know, this is a core that we've seen before. Uh, one thing to note here is that the Mimikyu does have Protect rather than something like a Will-O-Wisp. That's really valuable because I feel like when people play against Mimikyu, especially me, for example, I often like just think that it doesn't have Protect. And Protect is so valuable because so many players will often try to double up onto it, especially on turn one. So it buys you a lot of powers just on the first turn immediately. Uh, and even though it shouldn't be like super crazy, I just think a lot of players, it's like it's really hard to cover for Protect and to cover for Mimikyu trying to trick room on turn one from the opponent's perspective. So yeah, that's going to be the main core here. With Mentor Urban Disguise, Mimikyu really is one of, if not the best trick room setter in the format because it doesn't need to rely on redirection. And so it makes Incineroar plus Mimikyu an incredibly efficient lead for this team. Incineroar here is really standard. You've got Magnet, Reggie, Alecky. Uh, the Alecky is valuable here just because it gives you fast offense, right? If you don't have the Alecky, then the team is just relatively slow. But with the Alecky, what this allows you to do is potentially lead like Alecky, Mimikyu, Alecky, Calyrex, and Volt Switch into Trick Room turn one. Uh, you know, have your couple turns of Trick Room to operate with, and then sweep with Alecky potentially in the end game. Uh, it means that the team is not super one-dimensional, where you're only relying on slow Pokemon setting up Trick Room every time. Um, so standard Alecky set here, it's going to be Magnet over Focus Sash, mainly because you don't really need the Sash on a team like this. Uh, Sash Alecky is really helpful, especially on like Zacian teams against Kyogre, but we don't, we're not going to struggle that much against Kyogre, especially when you have Lorantis and Feeny. So those are two of the other cool Pokemon on this team. The Return of uh, Specs Feeny, it just does a lot of damage, covers for a lot of things that, you know, give Calyrex trouble, especially Incineroar, for example. And then the Lorantis here is another Pokemon that takes advantage of opponents' uh, Intimidates, right? Uh, with that Contrary ability and with that Aka uh, Berry. This is actually a pretty cool counter kind of into uh, Incineroar. I guess I wouldn't call it a counter per se, because it's not like it just absolutely wins, but like, you know, an Incineroar versus Lorantis, they'll give you a boost. They can't KO you with Flare Blitz, and then you can superpower them uh, to not only potentially just one-shot them, but also get an attack and a defense boost. Uh, so Lorantis here, a really cool pick, and it's going to be a, a lot more matchup based. You're not going to bring Lorantis in every single match, but uh, you know when the opponent has an Incineroar in team preview, you can already start thinking about bringing Lorantis because almost every player is going to bring Incineroar just to try to counter that Calyrex. So yeah, it's a really cool Pokemon that I think deserves to see a little bit more usage. Anyway, this team was built by a player called Boss. You may remember him because we featured many of his teams on the channel. Uh, he's really been one of my favorite team builders in Series 10. Feels like he's always able to come up with very strong teams that also have some unconventional sets or Pokemon. And uh, to me, that's like one of my favorite ways to play the game, right? Where you're winning consistently with really strong Pokemon, but also have some really cool surprises up your sleeve. And then also cool, yeah, just excited to see how Lorantis plays out. But overall, uh, Calyrex and Mimikyu continue to be a really dominant core. So yeah, Rental and Pace are in the description below, courtesy of Bass. And thanks to you all, as always, for watching. If you enjoy, please share your support by leaving a like. Question of the day, I'm curious what your favorite ability is in Pokemon or in VGC. My answer is probably Shadow Tag, specifically because I loved using Gothitelle in VGC 2014 and 2015, but I know that might not be a very popular answer. So let me know yours down in the comment section below. And yeah, let's get started. All right, first match of the day. Let's see what we're up against. It can be Calyrex, Shadow Rider. Uh, it's basically kind of like a complete opposite of what we're using here because they have very fast paced offense so i want to say we have a good matchup because calyrex one shots almost everything other than that entei so the main thing here is how do we guarantee trick room going up the main thing i am nervous about is probably going to be scarf entei and calyrex so what you can do is break Mimikyu's Disguise, and then Calyrex can KO the Mimikyu. But Mimikyu also has Protect here. So I think this is just a very straightforward Incineroar Mimikyu lead with Calyrex and Tapu Fini in the back. 
Malaki is actually interesting for Electro Web here, but like it doesn't really help the rest of my team outpace my opponent. And like I feel like if we just get Trick Room up here in this matchup, we should win. Lorantis is like a little bit compelling, right? We've got that Night Slash. But Feeny for terrain control is nice, and they don't have a single water resist, so yeah. The the main question here is basically can my opponent deny me Trick Room on turn one? Now, even if we get Trick Room up, it's not a guaranteed win because it's also about getting the Calyrex in safely. Uh, and of course, Calyrex is somewhat threatened by the Entei. One thing that's nice about this team, by the way, is that the Feeny can work as a switch in to put up that Misty terrain. And then Sacred Fire from Entei is just not nearly as threatening. Like, yes, it does super effective damage in a Calyrex, but Calyrex is pretty bulky. Like, it'll take around half its health from a Sacred Fire. So that's like decent damage, but certainly not enough to KO, right? Uh, and so if Feeny has the terrain up, then it's like, okay, well, you activate the policy. If we haven't already activated it, we deal more damage in return. And then Glacial Lance, once that policy is activated, is one-shotting pretty much everything other than the Entei. So this is the lead I anticipated from my opponent. And it makes turn one pretty interesting, because obviously I can't click Fake Out here. But like I said, the main thing I'm worried about is my opponent being Choice Scarf Entei. So I think the play I want to make is to protect Mimikyu turn one. Because Protect on Mimikyu is relatively rare as an attack. We do have Shadow Sneak as well, but I don't think that one-shots. Yeah, the play I want to make is to just throw Chop and Protect here. Because then, it would just give us a free knockout onto Calyrex, and it's, if you're in my opponent's position, it's really difficult to KO Incineroar right now. So, they're not protecting either of their Pokémon, that's good. Not that many Mimikyu's carry Protect, and... Okay, they just go for Astro Barrage. Fine with me. I mean, uh, so Entei was not Choice Scarf, but... You know, if it was like Choice Band Entei, or has a way to hit Mimikyu for super effective damage, it could still maybe KO us, but they actually just opted for Flare Blitz, so... Yeah, I feel like their Trick Room matchup here is just already pretty shaky. Either way, we're gonna get a lot of damage here onto Calyrex. They are Focus Sashed, but... What I can do this next turn just is Shadow Sneak into Calyrex and then Parting Shot into Entei. Um... I mean, I can Trick Room here, I just fear it being Choice Band Flare Blitz one-shotting Mimikyu. And I feel like the possibility of that's decently high based off how they played out that turn one. Now, the key thing to note is that Calyrex is really their main offense. We don't have Ghost Resist really outside of Incineroar. So getting rid of it this early on would be a good good start. So yeah, I think I'm going to just go for Parting Shot here and Shadow Sneak. Uh, while it would be nice to get up Trick Room, we don't necessarily need it at this point in the game. Maybe they protect the Calyrex and then Flare Blitz Mimikyu break her disguise, but then uh, we you know get the Entei to minus one. I get a free switch and into my Calyrex Ice Rider. And then I have two Pokemon that threaten with Trick Room. They very smartly, however, do go with the Protect, so... I think they're playing this as well as they can for what is a pretty tricky matchup for them. Okay, that also confirms they're not choiced, so that's good to know. They go for Sacred Fire, they're gonna get the Burm, that's fine. Um, obviously we prefer to not get the Burm, but... Most Entes are Assault Vested, I just wanted to play around it being either Choice Scarf or Banded, because both would actually give us a fair amount of trouble here. So good protect there. Uh, I think had we set up Trick Room here, the game's probably just over, but we're still in a really good spot, to be honest. Um, I think here I'm willing to just bring out Tapu Fini, honestly. Yeah. That sets up terrain. Now if you're my opponent, the question is, do you go for a Hail Mary Astro Barrage because you already figure that this matchup is pretty rough, or do you try to play around it and switch out Calyrex here, for example? Because it feels like if I get Trick Room just at any point in the game, the match basically feels like it's over. But if you're in my opponent's shoes right now, you might be thinking, hey, you have to Shadow Sneak here. You gotta respect the... Yeah, you just gotta respect the offense, right? Uh, Honestly, Muddy Water into Protect here is kind of safe. Because the one thing I'm a little bit nervous about, I guess, is Entei switching out into their NDD, and then them going for Astral Barrage. So, okay, I'm actually down to Muddy Water and Protect in this position. I also think there's a decent chance Calyrex switches out here. Let's see. It's actually going to be Entei switching out, so that's probably NDD coming in, right? Yep. Okay, no problem. Uh, Yeah, they're honestly playing this game pretty well. Like, I haven't been able to Trick Room, and I, I kind of took a risk on turn one, really. Uh, well, I was just mainly nervous about it being Choice Banded Entei. And maybe I didn't need to be that afraid of it, but that's fine, right? Like, we'll get the KO on Calyrex here and get some good damage onto Feeny. They just go for Astral Barrage, which is fine. And the key thing here is that they don't have that much damage output once Calyrex 
uh, goes down. And we still have our Calyrex Ice Rider, right? Which can just click Trick Room at any point. Uh, the only scary thing here is I did risk missing Muddy Water, so that could have been pretty bad. Um, but fortunately for us, we don't miss, so that's good. Okay, and now what I can do is probably just pivot the Tapu Fini back out into Incineroar. Like, like I said, setting up Trick Room is the main goal of this matchup, but we don't necessarily need to do it on turn one. Now that we've gotten the KO onto Calyrex, you know, there's even more room for us to... Okay, they actually bring out Landris. Landris is interesting, because uh, you don't KO both Pokemon in this position. So I think I'm willing to just go for a Muddy Water and a Trick Room. At this point, Entei's in the back, so Cal Calyrex at this point can just come in and click Glacial Lance, right? That's relatively free for us. I guess if, like, Life Orb Sludge Bomb one-shots the Mimikyu, or sorry, the Feeny, which it probably does, then you do get an Expanding Force, but yeah, they're gonna Earth Power into Mimikyu, but this is where us being Specs Feeny is super, super nice. Uh, what did we miss there? I actually wasn't sure. <laughs> okay, it was the Landris, it was the Feeny that we missed, but we hit the Landris, that's a more important target, so I'll take it. Could be worse. And they're gonna just gonna go for expanding force. Okay, it's fine by me. And they crit us. Oh man. Uh, that could actually be really bad news. Cause I was fine with the miss, but the crit is what actually hurts a lot in this position. But I think what we can do here, uh, it's a question of whether or not the Indy has protect. And even, I don't even think, like, Helping Hand Flare Blitz KOs Calyrex, to be honest. So I think we're still fine, but obviously that last turn was pretty frustrating. But, you know, this is a bad matchup for my opponent, so if you want to win in this, you often have to hope for a little bit of good fortune, and they're making good plays, right? Nothing I can do about that uh, in terms of... Well, not nothing I can do in terms of the RNG, but I think that last turn I would I would have played it out the same way, because I don't have a safe switch in Interred Power on the Mimikyu slot. So the play I want to go for here is to just Throat Chop into the Indeedee and Protect. And they know I have this, but I'm still okay with it. Yeah, they go for Helping Hand. Okay. I don't think a Helping Hand, a Stomping Tantrum KOs the Incineroar here either. And if we knock out Indeedee, that should be game over. Because then your Fire type attack doesn't KO my Calyrex. Yeah, and they just go for Flare Blitz. Okay, cool. Alright, here's Throat Chop. Hoping that's enough to get the knockout here. It's not actually. Ugh. Okay. Uh, don't love that, but I think here I have to throw a chop, and we might survive a Flare Blitz. Uh, even if we survive, is it correct to go for the double protect here? Because they could protect, and then I would helping hand Flare Blitz in their position. Um... If we get the double protect and they do go for helping hand and we get it off, that's just game over. If they go for the protect and we protect into it, it's still fine. I mean, like, but the way I see it is double, we win the game one third of the time immediately off the double. Okay, we're not gonna get it. Ally switch. <laughs> oh boy. So, I didn't consider that <laughs> as an option. That is pretty interesting. Um, wow. I think Throw Chop should be a 2 8 KO on this thing. So, here I think I'm actually willing to just Throw Chop. Uh, oh, is Indy just going to go for another ally switch? Because I do want to get rid of that, so it can't go for... So it's a 1v1, effectively. Also here, like, me protecting Calyrex is fairly obvious, so I think I'm actually just going to attack with it and just go for Trick Room. Yeah, I... <laughs> ally switch Indy. Nice. I'm going to target the Entei slot, because Indy might have Protect. And... Yeah, I'm just going to Trick Room in this position. See if they go for another ally switch, they do. But that's actually good, right? Because we knock out the Indy and then force this to be Entei versus... Um... We go for Crunch. Yeah, now it's now it's Entei versus Incineroar, and I think we should 2-8-KO it, whereas it can't 2-8-KO us with, with us having the Citrus Berry. But, like, you know, this is a great example of my opponent not giving up despite it looking really bad on paper. And 
I, I kind of played around. Maybe I didn't need to play so scared. Um, also, yeah, I'm curious what their fourth is because Crunch, it, it's got to be something to hit Incinera, right? Something like a Stone Edge or a Stomping here. I don't think it's a 2-hit KO, and I think Throat Chop 2-hit KOs them in return, but I'm not 100% sure. It's going to be close. They're using Sacred Fire, so I guess they don't have... Oh, oh, that's actually really smart. If it's uh, it's intentional to not activate a berry here, and then you go for a Stone Edge critical hit, if that's what they are what they have. Let's see. No, it's just Sacred Fire. Okay, I guess they don't have a Stomping or Stone Edge here, which is kind of surprising, because those are both pretty good moves on AV and Tay. So this... Game did not play out how I expected it to, to be honest. But my opponent made really good... Like, turn 1 worked out really well for us, obviously. Uh, turn 2, they made a really good play, just going for that Protect, expecting the Shadow Sneak. Um, I guess they could have just switched in. And if if I had just clicked Trick Room turn 1, like, we probably would have won this. But yeah, I was just nervous about it being Choice Banded on, on the Entei and just losing Mimikyu for nothing on turn 1. So I would play the game the same way. And it's like... We also got pretty unlucky, right? We missed the Muddy Water on NDD. If we don't miss that Muddy Water, um, then it's just in KO range from a Throat Chop or any attack at that point. Uh, and we got crit by the Expanding Force. I'm pretty sure we survived Expanding Force if they don't crit there. So it's like, we're in a really weird spot because we had a very unlucky turn, but because the matchup was still pretty heavily favored towards us, it was still good. But that game did get increasingly scary as time went on, especially because on paper, like, that matchup should heavily favor us. And interestingly enough, we actually never even set up Trick Room, but it goes to show that our team just has, like, a advantageous matchup relative to my opponent. But uh, that's a good example of a game where, like, it is actually very easy to tilt after you miss a Muddy Water and get crit. Um, but because we had enough resources in the back, yeah, like, you know, you just got to stay focused and, and keep going. But <laughs> uh, props to my opponent. Like, they found they found the right plays, honestly. Like, if that Calyrex doesn't protect on turn two, I feel like the game's just over because then you don't have any offensive pressure. Well, you have Lando, I guess. I shouldn't say any, but you're in a really tough spot. We're actually up against an opposing Calyrex Ice team here. Uh, okay. This is an interesting one because it's like, do I even want to set up Trick Room? The answer is no, right? I'm not even min speed on the Calyrex. I could reverse their Trick Room. Uh, they don't have Water Resist, although Torkoal sets up the Sun, beefing up its partners. Mm. Comfy is really interesting. There's no Rillaboom. And it's like, are you proccing weakness policy on something? Hmm. Either way, I mean, Incineroar should definitely come out. It's actually really good offensively here, which is pretty cool. I want to bring Lorantis, but this just isn't a great day for it, honestly. I, I feel like it's probably Incin, Calyrex, Mimikyu, and Feeny. Mimikyu can reverse their Trick Rooms, which is valuable. What would they lead? Like, I almost want to just lead Mimikyu plus Calyrex. Because if they don't lead that entity, I can just self-shadow sneak and start attacking immediately with this Incineroar and Mimik uh, Feeny in the back. I could also lead Feeny just for, like, early damage with Muddy Water, but it's not picking up a knockout onto anything, so I don't love that. But, yeah, the dynamic of this is interesting, but we know that we're not min speed on Calyrex, so I'm assuming that we'll outspeed them um, if Trick Room's not set up, meaning that, yeah, we might not actually even want to set up Trick Room here. But... The last game was just interesting because, yeah, I didn't really get to utilize Mimikyu Calyrex. And, you know, in best of one, I just, like, tried to avoid getting cheesed by an, a surprise item or a surprise attack, which is why I played turn one the way I did. And, yeah, I don't really fully regret it. They're going to go with uh, NDD plus the Reuniclus. Okay. What do I want to do? Like... Honestly, I'm thinking of just switching Feeny out, uh, Mimikyu into Feeny, get terrain control, and then just uh, go for a Glacial Lance here. I feel like that's relatively safe. And then it's like, if you set up Trick Room, well then you're not putting on that much offensive pressure in turn two, so I can just reverse the Trick Room with Calyrex, and then, like I said, they don't have great uh, water resist, so Muddy Water is pretty free. Now, we've seen these two already. Surely they have Calyrex at their third, so the question is, what is your number four? Um, I'm really not sure. I gotta double-check their team. Okay, either way, terrain goes up. Ah, they actually just go for Expanding Force. That's, that makes sense. Um, that's pretty good damage. I honestly want to think it's Choice Specs based on that damage. I'm not 100% sure. I feel like Feeny should take that better if it's not Specs. Glacial Lance is so powerful there. They actually Trick Room. Okay. Hmm. 
So it's like, I probably want to reverse the Trick Room, honestly. Pretty free for me to switch Feeny into Incineroar here and reverse Trick Room. Because it's just like, you just don't do any damage in a Calyrex, right? Um, I also could take advantage of their Trick Room, but they're going to have their Calyrex in the back. That's going to outpace us under Trick Room for sure. Uh, actually, yeah, I, I think I'm willing to just stay in with Feeny, because even if you double Expanding Force, I'm not sure. Actually, no, I should switch it into Ensign here. It's just relatively low risk. Okay. Yeah, I'm just going to switch into Ensign Reverse Trick Room here. I don't know how fast the Reuniclus is, I guess, which is what makes this a little bit awkward, but, like, look how much damage we got on turn one, right? Th th this plays out even better. They actually switch into their Calyrex. I guess if Indity wasn't choiced and it has a way to self-activate the weakness policy, that could make things a little bit scary. Um, they double switch. Okay, perfect. Torkoal? Yeah, that makes sense. Nice. Okay, so Trick Room is reversed, and now what we can do is just Fake Out, because we have Terrain Control. Oh, I guess they can avoid Fake Out. Oh, actually, we don't need a Fake Out. I, I, I like just Flare Blitzing right now into Calyrex, honestly. Uh, I guess the only downside of Flare Blitzing is do I actually KO you? I'm not, I'm not even sure Flare Blitz and High Horsepower double up KOs the Calyrex here. So that makes me a little bit nervous. But, but, you know, we definitely have a decently strong start to the game right now. Like, the only scary thing here... I mean, you could pivot either of these out into NDD to regain terrain control. Uh, Calyrex protecting here is definitely a possibility. So I probably want to switch my Calyrex out into Feeny. I mean, how important is my Calyrex in this game, right? If I lose it here outright, is that even that bad? Because I honestly want to just Flare Blitz and High Horsepower into Calyrex. I know this is a little bit risky because they can protect Calyrex. Okay, they switch out. That's fine. Um, because this means that we, now we have terrain control for the remainder of the game. They don't deny me a fake out. And even if the Torkoal KOs my Calyrex here, depends on what fire type attack you're going for, because, uh, Flare Blitz will go off first into NDD, so that'll pick up the KO. Uh, and then High Horsepower now gets redirected into the Torkoal. The key thing here is that Incineroar is actually very important for us offensively in this matchup, which is, yeah, important to know. Okay, we don't miss High Horsepower. Fantastic. A large amount of damage here. Let's see if they went for eruption. It's actually flamethrower. Okay. Do we survive this? Nice. Calyrex is so bulky. That activates policy. That's the beautiful thing about Calyrex. You don't necessarily need trick room for this thing to sweep. And in this matchup, yeah, like we're faster than them actually. So this should put us in a very positive position because I well, actually I, I don't know how fast the reuniclus is. That's like the one thing that makes this a little bit awkward. But they actually bring out their Calyrex, which I'm fine with. Um, I do wonder if plus two Glacial Lance KOs the Torkoal here. I'm gonna make the same play. Actually, no, I'm gonna I'm gonna Flare Blitz here into Calyrex and go for Glacial Lance. The fact they switched out also makes me think that they don't have Protect, but I'm not 100% sure here. Even if they Protect and Torkoal KOs my um, Calyrex, I just get my Tapu Fini in and I can Specs Moonblast Flare Blitz KO your Calyrex. Like, the, the key thing here is to just apply pressure on their Calyrex so that they can't do any damage with it or set up Trick Room right now. So, yeah, I mean, in terms of Pokemon choice, I really don't think a Leki or the Lorantis really offer us very much. And if they have, like, an Incineroar over Torkoal, that would actually very heavily consider Lorantis. But Lorantis is just kind of awkward into Calyrex specifically. So if they don't have Protect on Calyrex here, I really think it's just game over. Unless uh, they actually Protect Torkoal. Perfect. Yeah, the, the incentive here is that, like, we just don't want them to get Trick Room up. Because if we Flare Blitz, they survive... And then, like, they get Trick Room up, and then we activate a Weakness Policy. We could actually lose the game from this po that position. But here, it's like, okay, they survive my Flare Blitz, their Weakness Policy. But even if you outpace me, you can't pick up a double KO right now. And once again, I have the speed advantage. So the main thing is just constantly outpacing my opponent. And like I said, we know that we're not min speed on Calyrex, so it gives me more confidence. Especially because when you look at my opponent's team, it's so clearly a hard Trick Room team, right? That team cannot really operate outside of Trick Room. We can leverage that to our advantage because we know that they're probably not going to have any speed investment on Calyrex. And 
that's one of the really nice things about this matchup, right? My opponent probably doesn't know that, so they weren't expecting me to reverse the trick room, but we know that. And th the way their team composition is built, it just like screams that it has to be trick room, right? Because like there's no there's no fast Pokemon. You the goal is to just get trick room up and then try to go from there. Um, honestly, their Incineroar answers are also pretty lacking. Like NDD Reuniclus. I mean everything that they have just yeah doesn't do super well into Incineroar. I guess the best way to beat it is to shut down um, the berry from Calyrex and then like double up onto it. Earth power, high horse power. But the fact is that Incineroar is actually incredible offensively in this matchup, right? It hits three of my opponent's four for super effective, which is pretty darn good. So, yeah, we can just go for a Throat Chop here and Glacial Lance. We don't risk missing with Glacial Lance. Should outpace here. And, yep, that's a dub. Don't really get to... I haven't really brought, like, Mimikyu with Calyrex, though. Like, I was expecting when trying this out to just, you know, uh, get it out. Self-Shadow Sneak, Policy, Policy, uh, Glacial Lance, Glacial Lance, and... Game one very much could have been like that, but I just played overly cautious. Now I don't regret it because like even even in the scenario which we got really unlucky, right? Crit into a miss into a crit, like it was still fine. If we miss Landorus Eye though, things could have gotten really dicey. So yeah, I mean the reality is I guess I don't maybe I don't love the way I played game one. I'd have to do my like band and take calcs into Mimikyu, because the Mimikyu here is pretty bulky as well. So actually, like Band and Take probably doesn't one shot, but I was just really nervous about like a you know, a surprise move one-shotting us there if they were a choice banded. And if and no, I do have to cover for Scarf in turn one of game one. Because if they're Scarfed and they just go Sacred Fire Astro Barrage, that's really bad for us. And Scarf Entei is actually decently common, so I don't mind respecting that. Just thinking about like turn two when I could have set up Trick Room. That probably was the play. But either way, it goes to show that you don't necessarily have to play the conventional way to net some wins. So pretty fun start. So let's look for another one. Alright, third game here. And okay, it's just Santee's Kyogre team. Now, Santee's team does struggle against Trick Room. Uh, so the question is, can we get Trick Room up safely here? Scarf Ogre is really scary. Blackie will just outpace it, though. Wait, are we max speed here? Oh, we're not. Um. Oh, does this actually outspeed Kyogre? I think it should. But I don't remember what speeds that Santee's Kyogre hits exactly. I would imagine it's EV to outspeed Scarf Ogre, though, because that's such a pivotal um, range to hit. Serene also has Tom, but we don't need to worry about that because we have Mentor about Mimikyu. Um, so it should be Mimi Calyrex. Lorantis is somewhat interesting here. Feeny. The main question I have is, how do you KO Mimikyu's Disguise? And it would be Rillaboom into Kyogre, Glide into Water Spout. So here, because we have Disguise and the Mentor, I'm actually fine to just go Incinera plus Mimikyu, Calyrex in the back, and then... And he gives me Terrain Control. Uh, I'm gonna bring Lorantis. I think we, we haven't gotten to try it out today, and it actually does really well offensively into this matchup, so I'll give it a shot. Feeny's a pretty safe call because you get terrain control, but I don't think terrain, like, controlling terrain is actually that important. I guess it does prevent Grassy Glides from Rillaboom and Serena uh, if we get Trick Room up, but that's okay. Calyrex is really bulky, so I don't think I need to worry about those that much. Yeah, they're gonna go Weavile plus Serena. So I'm okay with this because I have Mentor, right? So it's like, you're gonna probably taunt the Mimikyu, but I don't think Double Triple Axel is gonna KO the Mimikyu right now. And if we get Trick Room up, uh, we have a very good matchup, right? Like, the thing that Santee's team does really well is typically deny Trick Room, but this team is really well composed, and one of the reasons why Mimikyu is amazing is because you have Disguise and you can run the Mentorb on it. So, I don't need to click Fake Out here. I'm going to just Flare Blitz. Um, let's see, with Calyrex and Lorantis in the back, who would I rather KO? I mean, actually, I could just Parting Shot, but I kind of like just getting a Knockout to start off the game. I guess I'm not sure I KO Serena here. So, okay, I'm going to do Flare Blitz into Weavile and just Trick Room turn one. I could actually even protect Mimikyu, but they might fake out into my uh, Insin and try to taunt. Nope, they're just going to go Triple Axel, okay. I think with the Intimidate here, we should be fine, even if they, like I said, triple hit with both. That's not that much. Okay. And they just go for Grassy Glide, okay. 
Well done on their end, though. They didn't get baited into going for taunt, so they respected the mentor. But that's the beauty, right? It's like, now what happens? I get Trick Room up safely. Uh, the Serena is really weak into... Serena's really weak. I mean, really into everything that we have right now. You're going to have Kyogre in the back, obviously. Well, actually, I guess maybe you don't bring Kyogre. That would be really interesting. Rillaboom is a uh, bring here makes sense. That's where maybe, like, yeah. But, but the thing is, what I can do now is just uh, protect the Mimikyu and Parting Shot. And then just Shadow Sneak uh, Glacial Lance. So they'd have to fake out. Actually, fake out into Rillaboom here is fairly likely. So I'm actually just going to hard switch into Calyrex. Because even double Grassy Glide there shouldn't be that bad. Hard switch into Calyrex Protect here. And then next turn, assuming you went fake out into the Insane Glide into Mimikyu, next turn we just win the game with Self Shadow Sneak into Glacial Lands. Like, you can't beat that. Especially because neither of those Pokemon have Protect. So, I, I think, like, you know, Santi even said, like, his team does not match up well into Trick Room. But if you watch the Players' Cup 25th Invitational, what Santi did really well is he denied Trick Room every single time it was when it was a really big threat. And the one time in the finals was really interesting because he did go up against Trick Room, but Ryota's team was kind of awkward in the sense that, like, it doesn't actually fully utilize Trick Room. Um, so, yeah. Even in the worst case here, which is them double gliding into Incineroar, I still feel pretty good about our spot. But, yeah, it should be Fake Out into Calyrex, Glide into Mimikyu. Yeah, perfect. I guess the only problem here is if the either of my opponent's Pokemon are faster than the Mimikyu. Or sl like faster under Trick Room. Even if they are though, they're not gonna take Glacial Lance super well. So yep, I'm just gonna Glacial Lance. Self Shadow Sneak should still work even when Serena's out on the field, right? That's only for uh, the opposing side of the field. I'm pretty sure at least. And neither of these Pokemon can protect, and I don't even think Double Crit Glide onto my Calyrex is a KO. Ah, oh, they are faster. Actually, uh oh. Double double crit, which Shadow Sneak might be enough? Actually, if they just crit here, it would be enough, yeah. No way. Okay, we're good. <laughs> oh, jeez. That was too close for comfort, though. Um, yeah, I mean, they had to make that play, right? There's nothing else you can really do, but jeez. Had we actually gotten double crit there, we would have lost, but obviously the odds of a double crit are pretty slim. I, actually, it's... Triple crit, maybe, because if Mimikyu, if I actually self crit myself there, maybe we lose, <laughs> which would be pretty scary. Um, but yeah, finally, I get to show off what Mimikyu Calyrex can do, right? This was like the perfect demonstration for it. And this is exactly what could have happened in game one. But game one, I just didn't know my opponent's team. Obviously, we know Santi's team. And so uh, knowing the sets allows me to play in full confidence. Whereas in game one, I just have to cover for every combination of Entei set until I see otherwise. So we're already at plus four with this thing. Uh, we know it's Scarf Kyogre in the back. There's still two turns of Trick Room, so Lorantis will always finish this off. So, let me just Glacial Lance here, and Shadow Sneak. No need to risk missing any attacks here. And then Insim plus Lorantis will finish things off. I guess unless, like, this actually isn't Santee's team, or they, they made some modifications to it. But even if they had Protect, the Kyogre is not beating the, um, Lorantis. But I, I guess I should play a little bit safer here. The correct play is actually to, uh, oh, never mind, that actually just one-shots. <laughs> all right plus four glacial lance is good i was gonna say yeah i'm like i, I should have played that a little bit safer because let's say they're actually not santi's team and they actually have protect uh eh, i still don't think you can win to be honest yeah it's a 4v1 in that position so i, I don't think there's actually anything that could have happened but you just want to be a little bit careful because sometimes like one of my favorite things to do is actually take a popular archetype or a team that's well known and then modify it by changing just some moves ev spreads or items so yeah, don't like 100% assume it's Choice Scarf, even if you think you know the team, because maybe they changed the item. But I don't think there's any way Kyogre can ever pull off a comeback there, even if it's a different item. So yeah, that was a pretty fast one, so we can look for one final one. Final game of the day, and it's actually against rank number eight. That is pretty exciting. What in the world? Whoa. Um, This is very interesting. I'd love to try out their team, honestly. Like... Guzzlord, Heatran, Shedinja, Groudon, Whimsicott, Zapdos. Huh. Uh, Shedinja's actually going to be a really big issue for us. 
So much to the point where I almost feel forced to bring Lorantis, Incineroar, and Mimikyu to have three answers into it. Ah, uh, Feeny is really good in this matchup, but the Shedinja is 100% coming out, right? Maybe we still bring Feeny, though? I don't know. Um, Incineroar plus Mimikyu is a pretty safe lead here. Definitely have Calyrex in the back, and... Ah, uh, it's probably Lorantis. Because we, we do have the, um... The Night Slash here, so it allows us to hit Shedinja. I don't love Aleki into Groudon and Guzzlord. Feeny would... It's just so hard to not bring Feeny here, right? Like, it, it destroys the Guzzlord. Yeah, okay, but I don't think we need to be that scared of Guzzlord. We have Mimikyu and Calyrex. Okay. And then then it's like, okay, Feeny's good against Heatran and Groudon, but it's not one-shotting either. Calyrex actually does more damage into Groudon. We have high horsepower, so I think this is probably the best for it because... One of my opponent's win cons is me just not bringing enough anti Shedinja, right? Like, if I if I went Mimikyu, Aleki, Feeny, Calyrex, it would actually be nearly impossible to win the game. So this is a good example of where team preview is really important because yeah, I need I need good answers into that. But definitely a very, very cool team composition. Like, haven't really seen Guzzlord, haven't seen Heatran very much, but once again, that's the cool thing about series 10. Tons of things are viable. Maybe Heatran Groudon. Okay, so I think this is where Feeny maybe could have been helpful, but I don't know. I mean, I get an Intimidate off here. That's already decent. Um, Man, the only awkward thing here is, like, pivoting out. Especially with them having the sun up. And they're white herb. I almost feel forced to fake out Trick Room. Uh, they outled me really hard here. How would I even beat this lead, though? Like, even if I went Incineroar Mimi uh, Feeny, which is probably my best bet, like, I can't change the weather. So the question here is, does your Heatran one-shot Mimikyu? I don't think so. So the play I want to make is the parting shot into Heatran and just trick her in turn one. This is... This is a really good lead by them, so I do think I actually need- Like, if I just go fake out Trick Room turn 1... Oh, actually, this will just KO Incineroar, won't it? Oh, no, it doesn't. Okay, nice. Mmm... Yeah, it's a question of whether or not Mimikyu survives a Flash Cannon from Heatran. Okay, even if it does... Even if it doesn't... Is it winnable? The, the problem here is if I just went fake out Trick Room turn 1... What do I do turn 2, right? Parting Shot? Oh, substitute... Yikes. Um, cool thing is that the stack drops actually still go through Parting Shot. Uh, okay, so still doable. We're on Calyrex now. Ah, they still have self... Okay, we have Unnerve. They're 4x resistant to Calyrex. That's... I mean, that's an interesting turn one. It's a good one on their end. Like, you have no incentive to not sub on turn one, honestly. Uh, he tried, like, sorry, uh, yeah, Groudon protecting here feels really obvious. Ugh, I so want to just Glacial Lance into Shadow Sneak anyway. I could also high horsepower, but my fear is they don't protect here. The question is, does plus two Glacial Lance into Shadow Sneak KO this sub. What's the alternative? I just high horsepower? If I just high horsepower though and they just like attack with this Groudon? I mean it's so unlikely they attack, right? But... Eh... I don't love this play I'm making. I don't think it's the right one, but... Nah, they switch out. Okay. That's fine with me. What's coming in? Oh. This is a, such a cool team. They, they're they playing this so well. I don't know. I mean, I, I could have high horsepower there, sure. <laughs> the thing is, the Shininjo definitely has ally switch. I wonder if this breaks the, the sub. I don't think so, right? 4x resist? Oh, it actually does. Okay. That actually gives us a really big fighting chance, to be honest. How much does this do? You're minus one, sun's up. Okay, it doesn't KO. It's obviously a ton of damage though. 
Oh, uh, if I were my opponent, I'm ally switching here, I think. Actually, they could just shadow sneak into Calyrex, although I don't think that's a KO. I've got sneak, obviously, for this thing. Uh, I want to read into ally switch so badly. It's probably correct to protect here, at least, right? Ah, but they get ally switch and substitute. Is the thing. Oh, shit, Inja. Also, maybe Shallow Sneak just KOs Calyrex. Ah, I'd be kind of surprised, but I'm not sure. Okay, I'm gonna read into the ally switch. Because if we call if they get greedy and just ally switch here, we kind of win the game. But they Shadow Sneak. Ugh. Oh, that's actually enough for a KO on a Calyrex anyway. Okay, then, then I needed to protect Calyrex and switch into Incineroar there, probably. Um, I'm guessing they're subbing with Heatran. Because I, I don't really have good counterplay to that. Yeah. Yeah, that was the perfect play on their end. Because even if I switch into Heatran, then I can't fake out either. They played this game so darn well. Um, honestly, kudos. Like, you can clearly see how they managed to get their high ranking. It was a perfect lead. And you can see how much, how like Shit Ninja is actually so nice to support the Groudon and the Heatran because like there are very few things that are going to hit both for good damage, right? Dark, Ghost, they're really the primary ones. Um, yeah, okay, let's not give up though. It's still potentially winnable. Hmm. Yeah, this is, this is still definitely a game. I'm not going to give up yet, but... Kudos. Very cool. Even if I didn't read into Alice, which there, like, there's not much I can do. I guess I could protect switch out, but like, ugh. Calyrex into Heatran and Groudon's already just a little bit shaky. Feeny's what feels like is the right answer against the way they've led and played. But like, even instant Feeny is pretty subpar because the Groudon is just faster and has white herb. And we don't have good ground resists. And, like, Lorantis is it. But I can't really lead Lorantis into my opponent's comp. So it's like, I feel like they have a pretty good matchup, but then they also have played this... Whoa, I don't want to give up. Uh, I think they've played this near perfectly, honestly. So it's pretty cool to watch. Um, Okay, I'm going to throat chop and just sneak here. I bet they have ally switch. All right, they just go for protect. Okay. This is then potentially winnable still with Lorantis, I want to say. Um... So I'm guessing, yeah, the Heatran probably doesn't even have Flash Cannon. That, that make, explains their turn 1 play more, right? Yeah, it's Earth Power Heat Wave Protect Sub. Okay. So Incineroar faints. They crit there. That actually may have mattered. I was thinking I wanted that, but... I feel like I just lose the ground on now. I guess we have Aqua Berry. If we somehow stall out the sun. How many turns of sun are left? Should be the same as Trick Room, right? Ugh, that's so bad actually, because they timed it perfectly. They get to bring the ground on back in. Um I mean, I would ally switch here from them. Uh, th this is why Shedinja is so hard to play against, because it, it's it's specifically ally switch. If this thing doesn't have ally switch, it's a hundred times easier to play around. Uh, I'm going to make the call that they go for it, because we're so far behind in this game anyway. Let, we, it's kind of just like desperation plays, but yeah, they don't go for it. How funny would it be if they didn't even have it? <laughs> uh, the re... Okay, um, well actually I guess because I doubled up into that slot, yeah that actually always works out for us I guess. That doesn't even KO. Heatran has like 1 HP left, and it's Chopo over Shuko, which is such an interesting item choice, but works out perfectly. And yeah, because they had Willow as Pier, does Willow's Protect, Shadow Sneak, I would guess Ally Switch as the 4th? Um, yeah, I think we have Aqua, but, ah, uh, how do I, I just, yeah, I don't know how to play this. And sometimes that's the case, right, sometimes your matchup is shaky, but like, this is an interesting example of sometimes where it's like you run into a team like this and then you're you're asking yourself like okay well i didn't feel like i had many options uh so then it's like do i need to fix up my team substantially for a matchup like this 
And I would say the answer is no. My opponent's team is so unconventional, it's not meta at all, and you're not going to run into the combination of Heatran, Groudon, Sheninja very frequently. Now, maybe that changes as the meta develops, right? Maybe this is something that's trending upwards. So then so then the answer is basically, like, you have to see if you run into this anymore. But this is this is the first time I've seen the three of those together in, what, 150 games on the ladder, on high ladder. So it's like, this is an example where sometimes you just, like, accept that you're going to have a bad matchup against, like, a very specific core. So this was a really cool team, and yeah, I'd say my opponent played basically flawlessly, which was honestly a treat to watch. And I know it looks a little bit silly because I kept reading into the ally switches, but to be honest, even if I had called every turn correctly, as soon as Calyrex goes down, I think I just lose the game. And when a matchup is bad like this, you often feel like you need to make more desperation plays than not. Um... Yeah, my, the lead was just really good. I just don't know how I outlead them, though. Because they have White Herb, the White Herb is what makes a big difference as well. Like, it could be Instant Feeny, but the Sun just really negates that super effective damage. If I were to play a best of three against my opponent, I would probably actually still go Instant Feeny. Ugh, but <laughs> it's just not pretty. I think the key thing in this matchup is dealing enough damage to Heatran early on. Whimsicott's their last one. That's actually really interesting. Wait, why are they bring Whimsicott out first over the Groudon? That's actually very surprising to me. And I feel like it actually opens up a very small window for us to win the game. I'm not going to give up, yeah. Uh, I'm going to Shadow Sneak here. Trick Room's not up right now. This thing protecting feels fairly obvious. And I don't actually want to KO it right now. Ah, actually, Whimsicott's just going to Moonblast Lorantis, right? Yeah, never mind. I guess I could protect TR, but I'm on a timer. Yeah, I think they win this anyway. Uh, I'll superpower and trick room here, but I think Whimsicott's Moonblast at this point just... <laughs> oh, that's why. Uh, Encore is smart. Yeah, that actually guarantees you the victory, I think. Oh, no, no, no. It doesn't because I have Mentorb. Skitter Smack. So they didn't even have Ally Switch. Feels bad. But that's the beauty of Shedinja, right? You bluff ally switch just to not actually have it. Even if I had gone for a shadow sneak there into Mimic oh, sorry, into Shedinja. Uh well, Lorantis wouldn't have taken damage, but Whimsicott's Moonblast is still just gonna finish off anyway. Like I feel like my opponent could have played this on game in a lot of different ways. Yeah, Shedinja's just faster now. I'll play this turn out, but it should be a win for them. What a yeah, I love the mind games that the Shininja plays here, right? Like, I tried to play around Ally Switch two, three different turns, didn't get any of them right. Uh, once again, not that I think it actually made a difference. Like, even if we called every single turn correctly, I think we still lose this, to be honest. But I love that Shininja set from them. Protect and Willow Whips, too. Such strong options. Uh, okay. Yeah, I mean, I, I don't think this is winnable. I guess they could... No, we're gonna faint from Lorantis anyway. Yeah, and then the Shedinja is faster. I'd love to try out my opponent's team. That was such a cool team. Um, sub Heatran with Chopal as well. The Chopal was a big difference maker too because it means that the Heatran actually got an attack off. So it was like one of those matchups where just everything went wrong for us. <laughs> oh, they did target Mimikyu for some very bizarre... It's Life or Whimsicott. Wow. Oh, never mind, Lorantis was, yeah, one turn away from a burn. Life Orb, Whimsical with Encore. What a cool team. The, um, and the Groudon and the Heatran sets are pretty standard, too. It's not like White Herb and Sub Heatran are really surprising, but they definitely just caught me off guard. Uh, this is Mimikyu. I mean, I could have gone fake. Like, the thing is, if I fake out Heatran turn one, what does that do, right? Turn two, I'm just going to Parting Shot. They're just going to Precipice Blades Heat Wave. I don't have a single safe switch it into that, which is why I felt like I had to Parting Shot turn one. Oof. I guess I could have Shadow Sneak Shininja on the switch in, actually. Yeah, in this game, I just need to re read super hard into Shininja coming out. But <laughs> that, was, that was a hard read to make. That's a really cool team. I hope they get rank one. I want to try that team, honestly. That's that's one of the coolest cores I've seen in a while. And feels like it's nothing crazy, right? But the Shininja sh just works so well with them. The mind games of them, me reading Entalis, which and them not even having it. 
just added so much more. So yeah, <laughs> definitely not a loss that I mind and uh, props to my opponent because that's just some really clever team building, uh, including the life for uh, Whimsicott as well. I don't think I've seen that before, but it makes sense because you have the focus sash on Shedinja. So yeah, that's gonna be it for this one. Thanks so much as always for watching. If you enjoy, please show your support by leaving a like. Thanks once again to Basford the team. Details are in the description below. Don't forget to answer the question of the day and I'll see you all soon. All right, peace.